We've into the big leagues of heavy cranes with this review. It is the Liebherr LTM 11000D. That indicates that the crane was rated at 1000 tons capacity, and it also could be rigged with a derrick. In other respects, the crane was essentially the 800 ton version, and this uprated version is in the colours of Baldwin's, which is a UK crane hire company. The packaging is very high quality with everything nicely wrapped. But it's also a delicate model, so some parts came loose during shipping. And here our old friend Sue Perglu is being used to refix an access step up into the cab. With the pre-inspection service incomplete, we can move on to what else is included with the model. And there is this box, which has its own YCC number. And when we open it up, there are some heavy, well-wrapped parts inside. These are a set of four spreader plates. They are large and heavy duty because of the uprated capacity, and each one is nicely decorated in Baldwin's colours, including some graphics. Included with the model is a manual, and this is the non uprated version of the crane, and it starts with Lee Pair information about the real crane, including load charts. That's always nice to have with a model, and after reading about the real crane, we then go on to the model. And here the instructions cover the main features of it including some of the variations that this model has been produced in. It is nice information without being fully comprehensive about every aspect of the model. And one thing it's certainly not short of is reaving diagrams. Yes, there's information here for many hours of exciting reaving activity. There is another diagram included with this version of the model, and that's showing a different engine. And what's really high quality is the collector plate that's included. On one side it's a copy of the plate from the real crane. And when it's flipped over, there's information about the model. And that includes a production number in the run of 150 models. To get warmed up we'll start small and put a towing hitch in the front. And after that we can get on with some of the bigger stuff. Out of the box the winch drums don't have any rope on, but we do get a spool of rope. And the manual tells us that we need to cut a number of lengths of rope, and that we need to wind those on the various drums. So here's the first one, and we've tied off the end through the drum. And really, you don't want to be winding on by hand. An electric screwdriver is definitely the way to go. One of the more time-consuming activities is the reaving of the luffing ropes. And two separate lengths have to be done, and you want them exactly the same length. To achieve this, all the reaving activity is done, and then the last operation is to tie off on the winch drums. And after some happy times, this part of the work is done, and the model is able to move its A-frame nicely. Next up, there's a windscreen to fit in the crane cab, and that's because there are closed and open versions provided. It is feeling a little bit cold at the moment, so we'll fix the closed window. There's also a plastic handrail to fit, and that presses in onto the walkway outside the cab. Next there's more detail behind the cab with two lights to be fitted. The manual suggests that these should be glued, which at least would stop them falling out. But for now they're managing to stay in place. And then we've got a tyre winch that presses in at the back. Another nice inclusion is the lifting straps for use on the derrick. So we can go ahead and fit them and clip them into place, just like on the real crane. Because of the weight of it, the boom on the real crane travels separately. So here we're loading it onto a WSI truck, and the boom supports are also included with this model. There are some other parts that need to be added, and one of those is the locking bolts into the various boom sections. And these are small pins which can be screwed into position. But for now we'll just position them fairly loosely. Another nice detail to add to the boom top is the warning light and anemometer. The 
chassis of this crane model is very detailed and is a full transmission system that runs to each of the driven axles. There are also suspension and other components. The cab is delicately and highly detailed and you can see how thin the windscreen wipers are. The Baldwin's graphics and the chevrons are very sharp and is also a realistic number plate from the real machine. The door mirrors are also very fine and delicate and the steps up to the cab have got a nice mesh surface. Detail inside the cab is also excellent with gauges and controls. And going back outside the tyres have branding on the side walls and there are different wheels for the driven and non-driven axles. There are also tiny orange lights on stalks. At the back there are more nice chevron graphics and the rear lights have lenses and the overall detail is convincing. Moving on to the boom and there are large containers for the hydraulic pins and there are many fine details with lifting lugs all having holes in and the quality of the hydraulics detailing is also very high. There are various walkway panels with nice mesh surfaces and there are also fixed lifting chains for getting the boom off of transport. Another impressive detail is the application of sharp graphics over irregular surfaces. And here's another excellent tiny detail. It's the working clamps for holding the pendant bars in place during transport. At the boom head all of the pulleys are metal and separate. And the warning light is also a nice detail. But going in close you see the quality of the workmanship with all of the tiny parts. The outriggers are impressive with the large spreader plates and nicely formed metal pads and beams. Another interesting part of the model is this fuel tank. It is plastic and finely detailed with usable lifting points. The crane cab is highly detailed and you can see that by looking inside. The counterweight blocks have got some very nice embossing and that includes the lead pair name and also the weight of the block. The carrier deck has got fans visible behind the cab and we'll see some engine detail later. There are mesh grills and a finely detailed exhaust system. You can also see the high detail on the inside of the outrigger beams. Let's take a look at the hook blocks that come from the model and they're all metal. And this smaller version is the 9 sheave block. It has got working safety catches and a full range of movement. And if you want to go large, you can go for the big hook block. This one has got 15 sheaves. We are back underneath this big leap here, and the first thing to see is that the front four axles have linked steering. It does work, but it is a little bit spongy, and the rear two axles steer a little bit more precisely. Driving the crane along though, the model engineering is very good with all of the reels being grounded, and it is all nice and smooth. With the steering set, the model also does a good job of turning in a curve. The angle might not be quite as good as the real crane, but it's good nonetheless. A nicely implemented feature is the opening cab doors, and they do open to a good angle. One nice touch is the tiny built-in magnet which helps the door stay shut. So we've arrived on site, and let's get this big crane set up. The outriggers are in a star formation, and they pull out nicely, and they are also telescopic. The engineering here is both smooth and robust, and it gives confidence. The pistons get lowered by unscrewing in the usual way, and in comes the large spreader plate. The outrigger pad system is really nice, there are two pads, and there's a beam that spans between them. Once again, very nice use is made of magnetics, and it's easy to position the pads under the outrigger piston. Next, we'll fold out the cap from its transport position, and it rotates into the working position. There are some access platforms to add, and firstly we'll build those up by attaching the plastic handrails to the bases, and then these assemblies press into holes in the side. But this system's not great because the fit can be loose, and so the platforms might droop down and fall off. We'll add the platforms back on later, but in the meantime, we'll take the covers off, which allow you to get access to the winch, and again, these are nicely held in place with magnets. There's one cover for the rear drums and the other cover is for the front drums. Next we unwind the A-frame, being careful to keep tension on the luffing ropes. 
Next we'll add on the counterweight and we'll do that with giant hand cranes rather than a support crane. Firstly the counterweight tray gets added in by sliding it in and then pinning it with two small pins. Once that's firmly located we can begin to add the counterweight blocks. And when they're all stacked up we need to have a way of stopping them toppling over. To do that we use a securing chain and that gets fed down through a central hole that runs through all the blocks. Once it's through we insert a clip at the top and a clip at the bottom. And here you can see the bottom clips in place. We can then pose the erection cylinder being used to take the boom off of the truck. Once again we use the giant hand crane to give an assist. And it's a very good fit to slide it into the pinning position. And it's also easy to get the big pins in. Next we'll add on the safety handrails to stop our fingers falling off the boom. And we can connect up the pendants from the A-frame to the boom. And these are two more connections which are secured with steel pins. The real boom needs hydraulics connections between it and the crane body. And we have to make those on the model also. This is fiddly intricate work but it does look very good when you've achieved it. With all the connections made we can raise the boom a bit and weave a hook at the end. Now we have fast forward to telescoping the boom and the sections pull out very smoothly. Here you can see the pinning holes in the boom and they're at 50%, 92% and 100%. To lock the extension you line up the hole with the pinning bolts and you gently screw them in to lock the extension. Looking at some of the other features, the crane cab tilts and it also has another feature which is a sliding cab door. This looks nice and you just have to be gentle with it to make it look good. Another great aspect of this model is the super detailed engine on the carrier and it has many finely detailed components. It's protected by covers which are again locked in place by magnets. YCC has a reputation for making the most detailed and faithful representations of real cranes and this Baldwin's version certainly lives up to that standard. Both the detailing and the model engineering are of the highest standard and there's no doubt this is another YCC collector's item. It is excellent. Yeah. 